You say, oh. Bringing you the finest entertainment on this side of the void. Game reviews, movie reviews, tales and myths from the supernatural unknown, unsavory food reviews, clown world news, and much more, all wrapped up in one extremely mediocre yet morbidly amusing online television channel, The Shady Gamer Channel. Entertainment, but not for everyone. You see this cute little indie adventure game with its quirky anthropomorphic animal characters, atmospheric music, and seemingly deep story with philosophical underlines. And you think, is this Night in the Woods 2? It's not. Night in the Woods 2 got cancelled apparently. This game is called Fall of Porcupine. So is it at least like Night in the Woods, aside from the obvious aesthetic similarities? Yes and no. Wait, let me rephrase that. Yes, but less. A lot less. But enough of the Night in the Woods comparisons, let's dig into the main dish, the actual game Fall of Porcupine. Playing this game felt more like an appetizer though, I'll elaborate on that later. In Fall of Porcupine we crawl into the skin, or should I say the feathers, of Finley, a young doctor and humanoid pigeon that recently moved to the picturesque town of Porcupine to work at the local hospital St. Ursula. As Finley, you spend most of your days doing your shifts at the hospital, trying to keep your patients from croaking through various mini-games and chatting up his colleagues and other employees at St. Ursula. Through snippets of these conversations, our feathered doctor learns not all is fine at the hospital. Seeing how this game was released when the world was still in the grip of the China flu pandemic, it's clear the story of Fall of Porcupine wants to push forward a message. No, 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 not, not that message, but a message showcasing the hardships of healthcare workers and the importance of reaching out to those in need, in general, to have empathy. A noble message, but we aren't at church here, so let's take a look at the rest of the game. Gameplay-wise, it's your standard side-scrolling adventure game, with the occasional little mini-games and puzzles you have to do when interacting with patients or to advance the story. While the minigames are a nice change from Finley's walk and talk, there's no incentive to actually try to be good at them. Whether you ace them or fail them miserably when helping your patients, it has zero effect on their well-being. You just get a score from your supervisor, which, you guessed it, also has no effect on the story. Fall of Porcupine has a very linear storyline and you're basically along for the ride. Gameplay and player interaction take a backseat, while the story plot and art of the game take the center stage. I'm not saying this is ultimately a bad thing, it's just what this game is. It's nothing new, there are plenty of games like this, of course usually indie games, and some are highly regarded. And also, yours truly enjoyed some of these. So I'm not dunking on Fall of Porcupine with this observation. The town of Porcupine is a stunning piece of 2D art and has that nostalgic old-timey small town vibe with some modern elements. There's just not much of it. The game just doesn't do much effort to flesh out the town. Porcupine has a few well worked out locations but most of it is just streets with random buildings and a very limited amount of buildings you can enter. Exploration of Porcupine is a pretty bare-bones affair. Even the story, which should be the biggest selling point for a game like this, falls a bit short. Not that it's bad, it just stops abruptly. After a major plot point event in the game, it just goes... That's all folks, the end. While it really seems there should have been just more. More story to flesh out, more porcupine to explore, more character and side character developments, just more in general. That's my main critique of this game. It just needed a bit more of, well, everything. It's a decent game, but I feel it somewhat became overshadowed by its own message.